This video is on symmetric matrices, a special class of matrix tensors. I'll use a combination of slides and hands-on code demos to show you symmetric matrices in general, as well as the most critical symmetric matrix of all, the identity matrix. A symmetric matrix is a special matrix case with the following properties. So first it has to be square. So it has as many rows as it has columns. So I've got an example of a symmetric matrix right here with three rows and three columns. The other key property is that the transpose of the matrix is equal to the matrix itself. So that means that you can have anything along the main diagonal of the matrix, but above and below, there must be a symmetrical mirror image so that when you transpose, you end up with the same matrix. Let's do a hands-on code demo to uh, just look at this quickly in practice. I'm using NumPy in this cell to create the same matrix, the same symmetric matrix as I showed you on the slide. You can confirm that for yourself. And let's have a look at the transpose of that matrix by using the dot T operator on the matrix. Ah, yep, it looks exactly the same. And you know, you can visually inspect it quickly when it's a three by three matrix. If it was a bigger matrix, you could use the double equal sign to confirm that all the elements are the same, whether you have the transpose or the original. So cool, that's a symmetric matrix, that's it. Now let's talk about a special case of a symmetric matrix. That's the identity matrix. So this is a symmetric matrix where every element along the main diagonal is equal to one. All of the other elements are equal to zero. We can annotate such an identity matrix with I, and of course it has matrix notation, so it's capitalized and italicized and in bold. And then you put as a subscript, however many rows or columns, whatever the height and width, height or width, and also I guess the length of the main diagonal, they're all the same value. So in this case, identity matrix I4, it has four rows, four columns, and its main diagonal is four elements long. The special thing about identity matrices is that if you take an n length vector, so in this case, a vector of length four, and you were to multiply that vector by the identity matrix, it is left completely unchanged. Let's go look at a hands-on code demo to see that. All right, so here I'm using PyTorch to create an identity matrix. And we could have done all of these examples in NumPy and in PyTorch and in TensorFlow, like many of the examples in this notebook. But I figure by this point, if you've been following along with all the videos, you should be pretty comfortable being able to do uh, any of these uh, exercises here that we're working through in NumPy, PyTorch, or TensorFlow. So if you want to, as an exercise on your own, you could try doing uh, this creation of an identity matrix and uh, the rest of the steps um, that we're talking about here in either of the three libraries. Anyway, so I'm creating the identity matrix in PyTorch. And so as you can see, this is uh, an identity matrix I3, which has three rows, three columns, and we've got all ones along the main diagonal, zeros everywhere else. Now you can take any vector tensor of length three. Let's use this one with the elements 25, two, and five. If we perform matrix multiplication of that identity matrix by the vector, we output exactly the same vector as went in. So this is the special property of identity matrices. Up next are three comprehension exercises on matrix multiplication that include an identity matrix. After that, we'll move on to the all important matrix inversion operation, which relies directly itself on an understanding of identity matrices as well.